Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com and State Farm. This time we're going to get some interesting information from our online parts guru, Mr. Tom Taylor. Tom, welcome back to Goss's Garage. Thanks for having me, Pat. All right, uh, what did you bring here? Parts from several different systems that I, I thought would uh, viewers would find interesting. This is the fuel pump assembly. Cars have this in the gas tank inside the, the fuel pump. Um, th this is the sending unit for the gauge, the fuel gauge, and people will see their, their gauge will be full, then it'll drop to empty. Um, what's happening is there's electrical contacts here that wear out as this arm goes up and down, or, or the bushing itself will wear out, and, and so you get fluctuation, and the gauge will be erratic. And s some vehicles have, will have two of these because the gas tank is, like this vehicle, is saddle shaped, is wrapped around the drive shaft. Mm -hmm. Um, so you'll, you'll have two of these and the, the gauge might be, it won't go above half or it won't fall, drop below a quarter tank. That's a sign that just one of these needs to be replaced. And I, I rec usually recommend replacing the whole thing versus individual parts because once you have it out, the other parts are likely to fail soon. So get a new fuel pump, get a new strainer. The, the second part is a, a new part that shows parts, systems don't necessarily improve or they have some bugs to work out. Um, it's an electric water pump. And electric pumps are becoming more and more common on hybrid cars, and this is out of a BMW. It's just the water pump that sends water through the radiator and such. The, the problem here is the, the uh, coolant is flowing through these pipes and the electrical connectors right here. So if, if this plastic cracks internally or um, th this plastic is compromised in some way, you can get coolant being pumped through the electrical connector into the wiring harness and the wiring harness is wrapped with tape or conduit, and, and it could travel all the way to a computer, damage the computer, it could show up in your taillight, it could show up in the interior of the car, create all sorts of hard to diagnose problems, and, and this is the, the cause. Yeah, just try explaining that to your customer, that their taillight is full of coolant, <laughs> and they just don't grasp it. I, I imagine, yeah. <laughs> And, and th this last one is, is, is just a fun uh, thing. I thought it would help resolve a conflict spouses might be having if they're arguing, hey, is it wasting gas if I have the, the fan turned way up for the heat and AC? Should I turn that down to save gas? Well, the, this is a blower motor resistor from an older vehicle. And in older vehicles, if you turn down the fan, the excess current is just going through these coils and heating them up. So you're, you're not saving any gas, not saving any electricity. So it doesn't matter where you have that switch. But on newer vehicles, it's, uh, it's a computer cycling the uh, blower motor on and off very quickly, depending on how fast you have the setting set. So it, it, theoretically, if you turn down the fan, the, the uh, motor cycling less frequently, and you, you could save a tiny bit of, it, of electricity and a, maybe a cup of gas over the life of the vehicle. But at least now you know the answer to the, you can su <laughs> settle that argument with your spouse. Right. Well. Okay, that's one way to look at it, that's for sure. Tom, thank you so much. And if you have a question or a comment, drop me a line right here at Motor Week.